What's growing on, gardeners? It's Sunday, December 31st, and another year has come to a close here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. Exactly one year ago, I showed you how to build a $25 speed composter out of a basic trash can from the hardware store. And over the last year, many of you had questions as the video became quite popular. Some of your questions were about the performance, the longevity, and if I'd make any changes to the design if I were to do it all over again. Well, on today's video, I'm going to answer all of those questions as well as show you the real world performance of this speed composter. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon store and Spreadshop links in the video description for everything I use in my garden and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. But before I get into this video, if you're curious about how to build this trash can composter, I will make sure to link to the video that shows you how both above and down below in the video description. Now, first things first, why did I go ahead and build myself that trash can composter? Well, I used to have a cold cold compost pile and the remnants of it is what you see right here. Having a cold compost pile, especially where I live on the humid southeastern coast, was a nightmare. It would become overwhelmed by weeds, it would become overwhelmed by pests, mostly insects that would breed in the compost pile, and the decomposition rate was so slow that it wasn't even worth having. I just had to wind up going out and buying my own compost anyway. So I figured if I designed an enclosed system, not only would I be able to keep all the weeds and insect pests out, but I would also get faster composting results. The point of this speed composter was to resolve all of the issues I was having with the cold compost pile. Having an enclosed design would keep most insects out and prevent all weed seed germination. In addition, because this is a black trash can, no matter what time of the year it was, this would effectively heat up in the sun and create an artificially warm microclimate. Now we all know that decomposition happens more quickly as the temperature rises, so because this is a black trash can trapping in all that heat throughout the day, it would effectively compost much more quickly than some cold pile just sitting out in the open in the yard. Now, in order to prevent the compost from going anaerobic and souring, you have to drill a series of holes both in the bottom of the trash can and along the sides. The holes in the bottom of the trash can are there to facilitate water drainage. You cannot have sitting water in the bottom of your composting trash can. Also, the air holes on the side are critical to letting in fresh air for aerobic decomposition. And many of you had concerns about these holes drilled throughout the trash can. We will address all of the concerns coming up soon. Now, what am I composting in this trash can speed composter? Well, we order little to no takeout and we only eat out maybe once or twice a month. So I cook almost all of the meals that we eat from home and I predominantly use food that I grow in my own garden for the vegetables. So most of what we compost here are leftover kitchen scraps from my own garden vegetables that we don't eat. Also, I add things like coffee grounds, eggshells, banana peels, as well as when I rip out the old plants from my garden, if there's any root mass left behind, I often add in the root mass to this as well. Now it's important to note that I use this as a cold composter. I don't use this as a hot composter, although you could if you wanted to. With hot composting, you need very specific ratios of green material and brown material that you rotate and turn regularly to keep the heat going. That's not something I'm doing. This is basically just a cold composter that breaks down extra quickly because of the heat of the day since this black trash can gets artificially hot thanks to the microclimate it creates. So it's important that you know this. This is really accelerated cold composting, not true hot composting. Now I'm going to open up the lid and I'm going to look at the results of composting my kitchen scraps. Now I haven't added anything to this trash can composter in over three months, probably pretty close to four months. And at the time I had it about halfway filled with various kitchen scraps. And I've only rotated it maybe two or three times since and I haven't really looked inside for two months. So when I open this lid, what we're going to find is those composted kitchen scraps that have been neglected for a fairly long period period of time. And keep in mind, because we're in the middle of winter right now, this is basically the worst the performance is going to be because these are the coldest temperatures and the shortest days of the year. So now let's take off the lid and see what's inside. And that is the results of a couple of months of undisturbed composting in this trash can. You can see the eggshells really didn't break down very well. They 
tend to take like a year or so to break down. They take a very long time. Uh, there's some leftover plant roots in here, but if I dig around, I mean, for all intents and purposes, everything basically looks like a bag of compost that you buy at the hardware store sands those eggshells. So it looks like overall, ooh, you're getting some really good looking, some really good looking compost down the bottom there. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this trash can out and we'll dump it and take a look at it. And that is the beauty behind this trash can design. Because it is sunken into the ground, if you want to actually take the compost out, all you have to do is just pick up the trash can and then just dump it, which is pretty heavy. And digging around in this compost, trying to take the clumps out of it, overall I think it looks pretty fantastic. There are still a few roots here and there that haven't broken down, and there are obviously plenty of eggshells, but overall this is a really nice, rich, deep, dark loam. And it appears to be pretty fully composted aside from those roots and eggshells. So overall, I'm really pretty impressed by what I'm looking at, especially considering these are results from the coldest, darkest days of the year when solar energy and temperatures are at a minimum. Now we have to do the odor test. If compost has been fully broken down or fully composted, it should basically have no odor and kind of smell like clean dirt. And that's what this smells like. It actually smells like nitrogen. You can smell how rich in nitrogen this compost is. So I don't smell any remnants of anything that I put in there. So that indicates really good composting. And overall, like I said, I'm really happy with what I see right here. And then right here is where the composter has sat. You can see how deep into the ground it was sunken, and you can also see the holes that I drilled in the ground. So we are going to put that right back into that sunken location, and then at the end of the video, we'll fill it back up with some more matter for composting. Now let's get into the next segment of the video, subscriber questions and lessons learned. Now I wrote down the most commonly asked questions from the comments of the original video, and the number one question asked was, are you worried about animals getting into the bottom through the drill holes? And the answer is definitely no. So many people were concerned about this, but it is a total non-issue because this is a sunken container. It's buried in the ground six inches. There's almost no way that something is going to be able to burrow in there and hole shot into one of those seven eighth inch drilled holes. It's just not going to happen. There's virtually no chance of that happening. And if you're really worried about that, you can just use a drill bit and you can make the drill holes a little bit smaller, but you'll have to make a lot more of them. Many subscribers and commenters were saying, well, I'll do the same design, but I just won't put drill holes in the bottom so nothing gets in. That will be a disaster. If you don't have drainage holes, the compost will rot and go anaerobic. You have to have drain holes in the bottom. That is mandatory. Question number two, are the holes drilled in the sides of the trash can letting in pests? Once again, no, at least no pests of significance. No mammals can get inside of these holes because they are so incredibly small. Now it is possible that flies can get in there, but honestly, uh, I do get some flies in there in the middle of the summer when it's really warm. Surprisingly few, there are some, but it's not a problem because the flies are actually aiding in the decomposition. It's not like I'm getting some kind of plague of flies. If anything, it's kept flies out of my heart because they're more likely to go over here than go around my yard and bother me. So it has been a net positive. The handful of fruit flies or house flies that gets in there is not really a concern at all. And I wouldn't worry about that at all. Once again, you have to drill the air holes in the side, otherwise you will get anaerobic decomposition, which is a no-no. You must let in fresh air and a lot of it. And if you're really that concerned about insects flying in through the drill holes in the side of the trash can, you can use something called screen repair tape and you you can paste that to the inside of the trash can to keep insects out. I'll link to some down in the video description in case you need to know where to get some. Question number three, am I getting any weed pressure inside and are seeds germinating in here? And once again, the answer is no, or at least sort of no. Yes, I have had a few instances where seeds have germinated inside when I've put any kind of guts of say pumpkins or watermelons or things in there, but seeds cannot thrive in an absence of light. They can't get photosynthesis. So the handful of seeds that have germinated immediately die. They pop up from the seed and then they wither away and they go away. So this for all intents and purposes has been completely and totally 100% weed free. Question number two, 
Do I turn the compost? That answer is yes. I turn it about once every two weeks. Now, like I said, because it's been so cold, I've been pretty neglectful since I haven't added to this in several months to let it break down just to make this video. But under normal circumstances, I would turn it about once every two weeks. And when I bring out the kitchen scraps every single night after dinner, after a couple of weeks, there will be a few inches of new kitchen scraps on there. That's when you want to stick either a big stick or a pitchfork in there and turn it real quick. Question number five, has there been any downsides to this composting method? And that is a resounding no. There have been absolutely no downsides to this method. This has not only saved me a ton of space because it takes up half the footprint of my cold compost pile, but again, I'm getting no pests, no weeds, and I'm getting results much faster than out in the open. So this has solved all of my problems. This has been a dream and it's done exactly what I wanted it to do. And question number six, what do I do in terms of adding greens for the winter? Well, this is a question about hot composting. Um, I don't hot compost in this. When you hot compost, you need a ratio of greens, which are things that contain nitrogen, and browns, which are things that contain carbon. Again, not something I'm doing, but if you are a hot composting person, it can be difficult to find greens in the winter time because we don't have things like fresh cut green grass, which is usually what people use for green matter in hot composting. If you need a source of nitrogen for hot composting, I recommend you actually look into coffee grounds. And if you can't produce enough coffee grounds, then I suggest you call around to either local coffee shops or places like McDonald's or Starbucks or Dunkin'. A lot of times they will give you coffee grounds for free. You're doing them a favor by taking their trash from them. However, don't just assume that they're going to give it to you. Call first to make sure so you don't take that drive for nothing. And the final question, with inflation being so crazy over the past couple of years, is this still legitimately a $25 speed composter? Well, I decided to go to Lowe's and check out the trash can aisle. Now, this is a 32 gallon trash can and I wanted to see what the prices are currently. And look what I found. I can't believe it, but these things have somehow how it gotten cheaper than when I bought it. This thing is less than 19 bucks now, and you get another 5% off with your Lowe's card. Something actually got cheaper in the past year. Finally, a little bit of deflation. So shockingly, you can actually get a trash can now for under $20. And remember, if you use your Lowe's charge card, you get another 5% off. So this $25 speed composter, for whatever reason, you can now make for $18. And I'm not saying that that's the absolute cheapest plastic trash can out there. You can probably find some that are even cheaper. But if you go to Lowe's, you can build yourself a sub $20 composter right now. And one of the last concerns were people were worried to use a plastic trash can to generate their own compost because they were worried about the plastic material leaching into the compost. Is that really a concern? Well, let me ask you a question. Trash cans are made out of HDPE or PVC. Do you know what else is made out of HDPE and PVC? The water lines in your house, where all the water comes from down the street that you drink out of every single day. Your garden hose that you water your garden with. Your rain barrels that you capture the rain in. Basically, if you're afraid to use a PVC or HDPE trash can, well then, you can't drink the water in your house. You can't make rain barrels. You can't run drip irrigation. You can't run a garden hose. You know, where does it really stop? So, am I concerned about that at all? Absolutely not. So I think that fear is a little bit unfounded. And also remember, we're growing our own food in our backyard setting. Anything we grow in our backyard is going to be better than the best organic produce from the grocery store for the most part. So using this to grow your own food, don't worry about it. You're getting the healthiest stuff on earth. So now that our trash can composter is empty, we need to fill it up with more material to make more compost. Now, these are old sweet potato vines that I pulled out of my garden in November. So they've been sitting here for about six weeks, getting hit by frost after freeze after frost after freeze, and everything has been dead. So we're going to pick these up and put them in our trash can. And this is, again, another nice thing about this. We don't have to bring our compost to the trash can. We can bring our trash can to the compost. So I've added all of the sweet potato vines and I've chopped them up nicely with a shovel. Now I'm going to add some kitchen scraps and in this bag right here I have some coffee grounds and banana peels that I've been saving for about a week because I knew I was going to make this video. And then I'm going to mix that up really well and then give it another chop and a turn. And then I'll keep adding to that every single day as I have more and more kitchen scraps and coffee grounds. Oh yeah, and don't forget to add water. Keeping everything moist but not wet is key in assisting the decomposition. 
And that right there is everything I've learned in the last year I've been using this homemade trash can composter. This has exceeded my expectations. I'm very happy with it. In fact, the only thing that I would really change is I would build two of them. Because I had to let this composter sit for a while to make this video, I wasn't able to compost my kitchen scraps in another trash can because I didn't have another one available. So if you want to make the system, I recommend you actually make two. That way, you'll have one that you're adding to at all times and then one that is sitting and you don't have to disturb and add new material to. So if you have those two basically in series where one is always sitting composting and one where you always can add your kitchen scraps to, you'll basically have have no waste. And that right there is my follow-up video to the $25, well now less than $20 trash can speed composter. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and please ring that notification bell so you're notified when I release more videos like these. Again, I will link to the original video down in the video description so you can build your own. And for any of the other materials I suggested in this video, I will place direct links to all of them down in the video description. In addition, if you're curious to any of the products that I use in real life in my garden, they are all linked down below in my Amazon storefront in the video description. And while you're there, check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. Ooh, we have a nasty storm outside, and then after this storm, we're going to get a big cold front, and the temperatures are going to dip down. So Dale and I are hunkering down inside, staying warm, staying away from the nasty storm, and then we're going to have to ride out probably two weeks of really cold temperatures. For all of you in the United States, we're going to have some nasty, nasty cold over the rest of January. So be prepared and keep your pups warm.